Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Elephant in the Room. How are all of you? Paranjit, how are you? Very well, Muihan. It's uh, it's brilliant to be back. Uh, it's on a Thursday, a rather wet, gloomy Thursday evening. Uh, but that should not stop us from talking about what we have today. Um, it's an amazing uh, uh, ride we are on right now. Um, last week, we started out the new segment, which is uh, specifically designed for young working adults. Uh, we followed that up uh, early part of this week to talk about individuals who are running their own businesses. And today, we are continuing with that same theme. We are focusing on SMEs. Yesterday, we had Ben Guan talking about the, 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 the work that he is doing within the electrical and electronic space, linking that to TVET, the type of uh, people and the type of uh, work colleagues that, that he's involved in. And uh, today, we are talking about something slightly different, although still within the SME space. Muihan, over to you. Yeah. So today, uh, as uh, preluded by uh, Taranjit, we have another business owner on our show. Uh, I would like to just quickly just welcome him. Uh, we have uh, with us today uh, Mr. Sean To, uh, who is a business owner. Uh, he actually co-owns an uh, outlet of uh, what we call bathroom and kitchen uh, uh, wares in that sense, right? Uh, and uh, the name of the, the, the business is actually Big Bath. Uh, they have eight locations uh, throughout Malaysia. Uh, they run quite significant operations. And uh, with me, uh, Sean is actually uh, is a personal friend. Uh, we both uh, go back a long way. I know Sean since I was 13 years old. We both uh, went to the same high school. And uh, for those Johannians watching out there, uh, Fidel Labore, uh, uh, good goal to have a Johannian around. Right, so with that, uh, kindly uh, allow me to get uh, Sean into the room. Hi, Sean. How are you? Can you hear hey. me, guys? Hi, Sean. Yes, yes. Can you hear? All yes. Right. Great afternoon to you, my dear friend, uh, my high school mate. I shout out to Johanian Muihan. Uh, thank you for having yes. me. And also, uh, great afternoon to you, Taranjit. Very nice uh, to have uh, to be here. And for uh, I suppose all the audience watching, I'm very happy and delighted to be here. Excellent. So let's start off without any further ado, Sean. And it's always nice to talk about a big picture before we start zooming in. Um, let's talk about the business that you're running. Maybe you could just describe to us a little bit about what Big Bath does, uh, the type of uh, the people that is currently employed, and where is it located very quickly? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you asked. Uh, we basically run a retail operation, particularly specializes in bath and kitchen. Our business name is actually Big Bath, and we have uh, five, uh, we have eight locations uh, nationwide in, uh, presence in five different states. Essentially, um, we serve uh, customers ranging from interior designers to renovators to homeowners. So our team uh, is uh, we run a very lean uh, team. We but we separate it into a, lo a little more uh, of a division. We have uh, our marketing group. We have our delivery team. We have our warehousing team. And of course, uh, because it's a retail, we have our retail sales team. Good. Very good. And how many people are you uh, on the payroll right now, um, Sean? Uh, close to about 110 of them. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, are you getting your, um, your product sourced locally here? Or is it coming in from abroad? Or, or what's the deal there? We, uh, for our operation, 80% of our products comes from China. And oh, interesting. 20% of them comes from uh, local. Uh, but you, you obviously know, even our local suppliers also get sourced their products from China. Yeah, indeed. So yeah. let's start off with that. And, and this is a good starting point. Um, how has the business been impacted by the, uh, by the COVID? Uh, and the fact that uh, you know we, we're going through an MCO period right now, being lifted uh, within the next two weeks, uh, all going well, fingers crossed. Um, but how has the business been impacted uh, in this regard? Could you share some thoughts with us, Sean? I will be very direct with you, Taramjit. Uh, the effect is actually two-pronged. So obviously, I've just shared with you, 80% of our products ships directly from China. So uh, if you look at the timeline, Coming back from Chinese New Year in February 2020, we were expecting the shipments of our products to arrive and be delivered to our clients in early March 2020. 
unfortunately, we have postponed all of the deliveries till uh, next month, which is June 2020. Delay, delaying all these deliveries also means delays in project, uh, uh, in all the revenues collection. All right. So obviously, coming out of uh, five MCOs extension in total is estimated about six weeks. Uh, a, as our group as a whole, right, we lost a total estimated revenue of about uh, close to 3.5 million, right? Wow. Okay, okay. So, so that that's that's quite that's quite impactful to say the least. Very uh, impactful. So, so my next thing is my next thing is how 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 are you now sustaining? How is the group sustaining in this regard? We would uh, love to. Op I just have to be very frank, right? During this MCO uh, period, uh, we we went through a lot. Of, we went went through our cash flow, the balance sheet, and all that sort also whatnot. Whatever that we can cut, we cut. Whatever that we can actually, uh, uh, we we uh, uh, being being a co-owner of the group, uh, all the co-owners basically went through the process of uh, getting uh, leverage from the banks also. Okay, so you've you've gone out there and uh, and actually uh, put some uh, put your you put the skin in the game more than what it more. was before the MCO started. Wow. Okay, and that, that's that's good to good to note, and it's very insightful. Muyan, over to you, buddy. Thank you. So um, maybe before I go further, just want to welcome all our audience uh, and thank you, uh, Dr. Bakstan, for tuning in. Uh, we also have uh, both Sujit and Bhavan from Perth. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Dr. Mike from Singapore, welcome, welcome to Elephant in the Room. And uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Chong Sulim, uh, thank you for being here in that sense. So in that sense, uh, maybe I will ask more deeper questions because I think I had this interesting conversation with you. Uh, that was the impact of the moment COVID hit or MCO started and with the extension of it. Uh, how has it been for the last two weeks? Maybe you can uh, share that particular experience with us as well as the audience. Um, so we are pretty blessed in some respect um, coming out of the MCO right now is uh, for Malaysia is called the CMCO. What happens during this period? We are seeing a lot of a uh, uh, more more than usual traffic coming into the the our retail outlets, um, and then we, we try to build our our so called uh, theory around it. I suppose it's because uh, b being during the MCO the past six weeks, the folks are actually using the their bathroom. Uh, and the toiletries more, more in more frequency, and in that respect, and they because stuff gets spoiled because you use that many times. In Malaysia, you know the weather is hot. You instead of taking showers for uh, twice a day, you probably go on and take showers for four to five times a day, and then multiply that by the number of people that is in your house, and then things just get busted. So coming out of the MCO, if certain things get busted, you know, you just come out and, and, and you, you, because it's already down looking, right? Instead of changing <laughs> just one part of it, you just uh, go and change the entire uh, toilet, including the toilet bowl. The, those that are not busted, you just want to make it so that it blends in with the new stuff. So essentially, I think we are experiencing... I also another theory after you told me that yesterday. Yeah. I was thinking that... Maybe uh, this uh, lockdown period or this uh, movement control period, uh, traditionally, all of us, I think, are depressed and feel sad about it. So the moment uh, you allow uh, some, uh, how to say, shopping shopping therapy or retail therapy to happen, <laughs> boy, we're going to make this spend on it to make sure that we feel happy in that sense, right? And then, I, 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 I wouldn't rule that out, Muihan. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So uh, I think we also need need more more spending in the retail sector to make sure that our economy churns yes. and, and come back. Yes. Uh. So uh, because uh, it is it is what it is, and uh, happy to hear that uh, that volume has increased. And I was made to understand for this kind of operations uh, during the CMCO, you also have a uh, very stringent guidelines by the ministry or by the government. Uh, maybe you want to tell the audience uh, what has that been in that sense. So during the CMCO, those uh, uh, so-called retail outlets or whatever outlets, right, that uh, opens their shop for business, they need to actually do a uh, pre-registration, check the temperature and whatsoever, not right. So those information has to be uh, correctly um, 
keyed into a uh, logged into a book or keyed into a system. So this has this uh, we basically have to after we get all this in place, we have to actually uh, tell the uh, appropriate bodies that we are doing this. So when they come and do the uh, evaluation and checking or whatsoever, not we have those information ready to uh, pass to them. For uh, obvious reasons, uh, we us being coming out of the MCO, we learn a bunch of stuff during the MCO and coming out of the MCO, we try, try, sort of like use technology to actually uh, enable all this uh, information taking. Okay, good. So, um, and this is interesting because um, the usage of technology now has become ubiquitous. Um, you know, it, it now is unparalleled compared to where we were a couple of months back. Um, but there's a very good question raised by Dr. Michael Heng. Um, Wei Han, if you could just raise that uh, for us, please. So, uh, Michael Heng from Singapore, thanks a lot for this question, Doc. Um, would you, do you expect a huge loss during the COVID period to be compensated uh, post-COVID, um, you know, in terms of, uh, of the, uh, the, um, the so-called contrying here? And if so, by when? And how differently would you uh, do your business post-COVID? New markets, e-commerce. And I think you've started to talk about the technology part. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Sean? Hi, Heng. Uh, thanks for the question. I, I love this question. Uh, do you expect a huge loss during the COVID period? I would say a definite yes. Uh, I, as I was sharing uh, a while back, a while ago, that uh, we lost an estimated of uh, 3 mi 3 3.5 million to be exact. So because, uh, you know, on a regular basis, because, you know, coming, coming out of the 2019 and being in 2020, right, we wanted to, uh, 2019 for Big Bath, it was a good year. And then we had we were so motivated that going into 2020 we wanted to do more right you know that's the general motivation but but then we started the the first quarter of the year having a 3 million 3.5 million loss so now becomes the fact that uh moving into post covid we need to basically rally ourselves motivate ourselves even more to actually uh make make back for the losses so how so the question the next question is how would we do our business post covid uh differently and new markets e-commerce essentially as shared our our markets has generally been uh to the interior designers to the renovators to the end uh, end homeowners and more particularly to the fact that homeowners are now very much uh, engaged with all these uh live uh, the the social media feeds and the social media contents so one of the strategy is to move our business online. So how we move the business online, I can say for certain we have uh, we um, we were the first to sell toilet bowls via FB Live. Can you imagine, that? <laughs> right? Selling a toilet bowl uh, and tell, telling them, hey, this is a very good experience toilet bowl and selling it. I can see people selling all those uh, fresh fish, but not, none is doing the toilet bowls. So what what we did during the uh, MCO was to do the Facebook Live, but that actually garnered a lot of interest from the folks around the social media, media uh, 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 viewers. And actually, I would, uh, 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 I would have a thesis that That's these the customers that are coming in are actually from the uh, stuff that we do during the, M uh, uh, the MCO. So moving Got forward, you. we will continue to do a lot, a lot of the social media content, uh, be it in FB, be it in the new uh, segment called the TikTok videos and all that. Good, very good. So what about in terms of people? I mean, we, we are having, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, uh, Sean, but uh, we are having a significant employee base. You know, it's 100 over people. That, that's quite a lot. And that has an impact on our, um, on our operating expenses. Um, could you share some thoughts around how do you see yourself now managing this in a more effective fashion uh, to, uh, to minimize operating costs in this regard? I'm glad you asked this, uh, Taranjit. So the period during the lockdown was very challenging to many. Big Bath is no exception. Our focus was uh, the things that we must do, which, uh, which is to adapt to revenue, re adapts ourselves to revenue generation model uh, in the new normal, which is reaching out to our clients via the online platform, be it FB, reconnecting with our customers, and even our friends and family for that matter. 
So also during this period, we had to uh, nurture uh, new leaders along the way. We basically, what, we, what was the exercise uh, that we did was we basically appointed leaders from within our current workforce, old and new. Uh, some recruits as new as three months were also made uh, uh, leaders and made them responsible for learning and delivering certain business modules that were required uh, to move our team forward. So, uh, so in that respect, we, we actually got, a, we actually identified new leaders. So that is a good plus point. So not forgetting, I always uh, love this saying, uh, sports, sports does not build character, it reveals it. The new normal is to deliver results, aka revenue, while we are working from home. So during this period, we put in KPIs to make sure our company stays lean and healthy. It is also during this time, we also notice non-performers and the non-cooperative so-called teammates, right? So they are not willing and not able to pick up new skills to adapt to the new normal. So coming back from the MCO, we have no choice but to take actions on these non-performers. Wow. Wow. All right. I, I like it. I really like it. Uh, I like the level of uh, focus that you have and that you're bringing to the table. And that's the right thing to do, Sean. It's absolutely the right thing to do. The question then that arises is how do we ensure that there is a gradual transition? Is this something that you have thought about? Because people are going to have difficulty looking at jobs outside. So what are some of the thinking that we have to make sure that we ease people out rather than just cutting them in an abrupt fashion? So so my, my last sentence to you was uh, there was no choice to take actions on the non-performance, right? Those, those actions are necessary, evil, right? So what are the actions? Meaning to say uh, we, we give them a probation again for the fact that, hey, you understand how, how these are the KPIs that you did not meet during the MCO. So I will allow you a short uh, one month or two months to actually uh, tell me or to actually uh, we list down all the KPIs, then they have to meet it. So this is also the part where we uh, put in all the uh, necessary things that we, if they re are willing and able to want to do all the KPIs that we set for, we will uh, retain them. But it is also uh, coming out is only two or three weeks out. So we are seeing um, a lot of uh, cooperation from the uh, non-performers back then, but there's also some laggers out there. So uh, yeah. I will see if the lag laggers doesn't meet those uh, KPI requirements, I, po I foresee possibly we have to actually um, uh, excuse them from our organization. Very no, no, totally understand. Totally understand. And, and this, is, this is an interesting dialogue. I, I really like the way you are approaching this head on. Many people shy away from looking at this, but this is the reality. And that's why this is an elephant in the room. So, Sean, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to pass this on to Muihan. Muihan? Great. I, I really enjoy your, your outrightness, and I think uh, it is really, really refreshing. And I think, uh, right, like you rightly say, when rubber hits the road and when business is important, I think the focus is still needs to be there. And uh, together, you are right to say that uh, it gives a good opportunity to show who are the tougher ones. Uh. Uh, as another saying that I like is, uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And I think in, in, this, uh, in this period, we both look at the tough business owners. Uh, we will see who are the tough business owners, as well as who are the tough employees that actually have a resiliency to actually go the extra mile and also survive in that sense. And I think, uh, rightly say, there's enough opportunities uh, for us to rebound. So with that, uh, maybe uh, I will also want to just check with you and uh, maybe you can share your, your observation and words of wisdom. What would be two or three things that you learned throughout this uh, last maybe eight weeks or so? I think we are 70 days uh, behind uh, closed doors. Or what, what would be a key learning that you can share both as a business owner as well as maybe as uh, maybe personally, what, what do you see? Uh? Maybe three things, if you can help to enlighten us. All right, thanks, um, I Well, coming out of this MCO, I say this again and again to many of my business associates that are in the trenches with me. Um, obviously, technology is the new enabler. Do more with less. 
I must say in you know this 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 is a one in once in a lifetime experience, and I am in some respect blessed and happy. So why? Because in my forty two years of being a human being, never have I once been locked down with all my family members for close to uh, maybe two months. Uh, you, two months, right? And we really get to spend a lot of quality time together, talking, laughing, and getting mad at each other. All right. <laughs> uh, jokes aside. Uh, this COVID-19 gave us an opportunity in business to rethink how to make our business more resilient. Our projects, you know, that were supposed to be done towards the later end of the year got accelerated and got completed within the lockdown period. We, were, uh, it, we, we just recently launched our membership program uh, and then we recently launched a bunch of uh, other uh, in incentives to, for our interior designers and our uh, renovators. So essentially, uh, that is, uh, in, I would package it as a whole. That, uh, the, what, is, uh, what I have actually uh, enjoyed most. Lah. I, I'm a very positive person. So uh, maybe just to uh, share with you, uh, share with mm. all, uh, a very famous quote from one of my favorite movie, uh, Forrest Gump. So he, towards the end of the movie, he, he received a box of chocolate and he said, life is like a box of chocolate. Although this quote basically means uh, life is unpredictable, uh, however, for me, it means uh, life is full of surprises. So unpredictable and surprises is a perspective. Henceforth, it is a choice my fellow business mates choose wisely. Good, good. But I think that the chocolates only in Forest Gump is unpredictable. You ask any chocolate manufacturer in Malaysia, they're all in a predictable shape and sizes. <laughs> I mean, jokes uh, in a way. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, if uh, maybe if our audience have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section. Uh, if not, uh, maybe I'll just get Taranjit back to maybe ask his last question before we do a close. Sure, sure. And that's that's very interesting. I I, I certainly enjoyed hearing that. Um, one last one before, and we are cognizant of time. One last one before we leave, uh, uh, Sean. Um, if you have an opportunity now to say, um, you know, uh, there are certain things that I would do differently to cater for these unsettling times that we are experiencing. What would it be? Maybe one or two things. Wow. <laughs> This is a uh, this is a uh, definitely something that um, I never thought of because uh, but but it actually it actually it actually did but we just didn't put more thought to it uh, and I'm certain that uh, because we were we were having a tough time um, getting the uh, bank the, the bank leverages uh, loans approved right. So and, and that's because we uh, when we run we, we run our business so far without uh, using any leverages from bank. So but when we require it, so there was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of obstacles. Uh. I would say uh, getting leverage from bank should be done earlier, <laughs> so that it is a uh, uh, fast faster, so that we can actually uh, uh, get it approved and then settling everything down. That would be the first, right? Um, definitely, in terms of the people aspect, I think we are getting the more positive uh, uh, teammates, uh, more 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 positive teammates in the on board is a very crucial part of the process. So we were we were blessed. Maybe out of the um, uh, hundred and ten staff that we have, uh, close to ninety percent of them are very willing and very able to actually get the job done. Uh, there was this one case, uh, you know, during our COVID nineteen day, we couldn't do any form of uh, deliveries. Then you was asked, yeah, the fake folks is actually uh, my uh, business association actually asked me, what do you do with the uh, workers that do the delivery? So uh, uh, this is also one of the one of the execution that we did uh, was to actually outsource our delivery. So go and do the delivery of the essential items. In some respect, they get they get paid for it. So and then of course the company also generates some revenue out of it. So uh, may, maybe in that respect also give us the opportunity to think when our delivery team are actually free and able, they can we can actually outsource their services out. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, excellent. I, I like it. So it's about it's about now having the opportunity to plan ahead, uh, if I may. Uh, it's about making sure that we are resilient in our thought. And we are seeing these consistent themes coming across all the while um, from business owners like yourself, which is great. Muihan, back to you, buddy. Okay, we have come to the end of the show. Uh, maybe just one quick last word from you, Sean, before uh, uh, we wrap it up to all our audience. Um, I Again, I would like to thank Taramjit uh, and then, of course, Muihan for inviting me in. Um, always a pleasure to be able to share our, our uh experience and and then impart our knowledge to everybody so that everybody can learn but we are part of this uh, bigger uh, ecosystem together and then we, we we are in this together never in some respect uh, think that you are alone so be be willing to hold the hand that is coming out forward to you i, I that, that that is i think uh, something that is important I like back it. to you I like it. Okay, and Dr. Mike say you are clearly on top of crisis situation. Uh, well done to you. Wonderful insights, all right? So, Thank okay, you. thanks again, uh, Sean. Uh, uh, nice to have you. Uh, we will see you soon, all right? Okay, so Taranjit, quick one. I know we are a little bit uh, running short of time. Uh, what are the two, three things that you thought very insightful that you found today? Sure. So I think the first thing that comes out is the uh, the positiveness that uh, we need to look at the situation. Uh, uh, we're seeing this consistent theme coming out yesterday from Ben as well as today from Sean. There's also the area of us looking at things in a slightly different facet, um, free planning. Uh, we're listening from Sean just now where he said, if I'd done it a little bit sooner, it would have been better. Uh, the other one looks like technology is ubiquitous. This is it. This is this is the age of technology, the age of Aquarius in the old days when you were singing these songs. Now the age of technology has come before us. Um, nothing new. We've been talking about this for the last decade or so, but now more so than before. And that has effectively meant that individual businesses and consumers alike have to rethink and reshape the way in which we are going to reciprocate with each other. Muihan? So I, one thing after doing, uh, this is our 32nd show. Uh, that's a lot. We have done 30 seconds, 32 shows. Uh, I think one thing that uh, comes to mind is uh, really, uh, instead of looking at all the negativities with the COVID-19, the really positive thing is really to push us into action. Uh, for all the things that we've been procrastinating, whether it's technology, whether it's new business model, whether it's uh, opportunities that we never thought uh, it would happen. I think in the last uh, 70 days, at least for Malaysians, uh, it really pushed us to think out of the box, think differently. Uh, and I, I can see that in this conversation today with Sean. Uh, it is a beaming... I don't know how to start a conversation to say that we lost three and a half million and yet still let's go out and charge. Huh? So it's, it's really, really uh, inspiring for that. And I thank you for that, uh, Sean. All right. Uh, before we go, I just want to quickly uh, just preempt what we have in store for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, we have a very interesting gentleman. Uh, let me just pull up his uh, slide. So we have with us uh, tomorrow uh, in Elephant in the Room, uh, Mr. Jokim Ui. Uh, and Jokim is actually the talent and culture manager for a startup, a big startup company called Photobook Company, all right? So we will uh, welcome Jokim into Elephant in the Room to share with us a perspective of how uh, their business, uh, especially in the startup community, as well as some of the human capital interventions that he is doing together with his team. And also we wanted to get uh, insight about an initiative that he started uh, to help to connect uh, jobless Malaysians, especially those who have been retrenched uh, with the companies that probably are expanding and need to hire because uh, in all crises, there's also uh, other uh, balances that is needed. And there are some companies out there or some industries out there are expanding in that sense. So with that, uh, hope you can join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, together with our guest, uh, Jokim Ui, all right? So with that, uh, I thank all of you for uh, being with us again uh, and your support, your continual support. 
and I hope to see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Absolutely. Bye-bye.